Proven performance and quality are packed into every MineLab multi-IQ detector. The combined power of multiple detectors in one machine. MineLab. Powered by true multi-IQ. Accept no imitations. Um, so what I'm going to do today is a video on newcomers to the hobby from the very basic of buying in the first machine, what you need most and etc. And number one, of course, which everybody looks looks over, is before you even buy a metal detector, you need a permission. You've got to have land. And the way I've always found it easier is um, by friends and family. I mean, you can go and knock on doors. You can put lights through letter boxes. You can bring people up. But me myself, I like to know that I've got someone that that's that can back me and go. This he, he does it right. So I always go friends and family. I ask everybody if, if they know anybody with land, even if it's an acre. You don't know what even is on the Some of my smallest fields have produced most of the stuff, and don't ever discredit some if it hasn't got um, any um, history in the background of it, because you'd be very surprised on some of my fields that I thought would be rubbish have turned out the best, and some of the fields that have got loads of history have thrown up nothing. So yeah. Friends and family, or even if you're going to pub, you sat in the pub, some fella sat there, talk away to him, turn out to be a farmer, just ask him and, and, and be polite about it. 50% always, uh, always goes to the farmer, it's always split, whatever you whatever you um, find of value, so that's something you have, have to take into account. And th then when you do get your first permission, do the research on the land. So you uh, will basically use LIDAR finder which is an x-ray I'll sh throw a picture up in um, one of these corners an x-ray of the land that will show you and you can see old enclosures or settlements and things like that and side by side which is old maps from 100 200 years ago they don't go that far back but they're still good and then the archaeology uh, arche arche site which shows where things have actually been recorded which everybody should do when they do find something of um, historic value and um, yeah you will get lots of knockbacks as, as you will see in these little clips excuse me mate is there any chance you can do a bit of metal detecting on your land no you can't get on my land hi there i've been giving you number in regards to metal detecting on some land of yours i was just wondering whether it's uh, all possible Take that as a no. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And then it's not all bad because some landowners you really do build a good relationship with, as an in instance in this next clip. All right, Mark. All right. Found anything? Um, yeah, I found a couple of bits. Um, found these Roman coins. Oh, I like them. Yeah, they're nice. A little Votifax head and a Roman ring and a hammered uh, Lizzie. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Yeah, you can have all them if you want, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. Yeah, all right, yeah. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot, mate. Thanks. See you later. Number two is a metal detector. Now, there's hundreds of metal detectors out there. It's really hard to choose, and people will give you different opinions on different days. And um, for instance, here's one. Now this is a cheap machine. And really, you don't really want to buy cheap unless you're messing around in your garden and you're not going to take it too serious, then I wouldn't bother with that. I would basically spend the money on a better machine if you're definitely interested in the hobby. And here's one that will be good, hopefully. Right, now we're talking this is a mine lab 340 and this is the lower end of the mine lab machines you have basically got the 340 440 and 540 i haven't used the 340 yet but i will at some point the 540 i have used and the cracking machines um for a starting out machine very they can be made very compact and obviously you adjust as you go very simple machine turn on and go uh, not too many settings you can go out of your way and get something along these lines, which once you've got one of these, you'll never look back. This is the MineLab Equinox 800. It's a little bit pimped out mine. It's got the S-Stem for better balance. 
and yeah these have got a lot more settings probably a little bit too tricky for starting out in the metal detecting world so you do want to start a little bit lower until you get hang of things because there's a lot of different settings that you will have to learn and i'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the video um but yeah this is the like basically the top one of the top machines that you can get your hands on and it's um where you will eventually end up at if you take the hobby really serious and you want to find some serious goodies i found loads of stuff with this right number three when you're out in the field you want to make life as easy as possible because you're digging plenty of holes and you don't want to have to keep putting your machine down on the floor taking a handful of soil and swaying it out of the coil which is the old way of um, when you've when you've located your target you basically have the mound of mud you find the target you take a handful of soil put it swing it over the machine until you get the target and then you basically sift through and you find it takes forever the new way of doing it is having a pin pointer pin pointer looks like a wand is a wand and it's a lot easier to find your targets out in the field these are this is the basic pro fine 20 from mine lab there's loads of different makes out there this is my personal one that i use the 35 this has got iron mode uh, which detects iron and different changes in sensitivity like i said same as machines you can spend as much as you want and that's going to be in one of the prizes so keep watching number four is a fines pouch now there's loads of different fines pouches out there Search your magazine, do some great ones with a mesh in the bottom where you get all the dirt drops out when you put your finds in. It's very, it's a lot easier to get rid of all your rubbish. I usually use the, the rear for the rubbish and the front for the goodies. And yeah, you definitely need a finds pouch. Number five is a digging trowel. Now, these ones are really good. The black adder, the same again. There's loads out there. Don't go buy a garden centre one because it will last you 20 holes and then it'll be bent in half. Go and buy something that's a lot sturdier. Loads of different ones out there. Cheap ones. They're not that expensive and it does make life a lot easier, especially when you've got to dig a little bit further down the hole or you've not quite got bang on and you've got to dig the wall out. Go and get yourself a digging trowel. Number six, which is the most obvious thing, is a spade right this is my very own digging spade bergen and ball you can get these from crawford's or there's many other spades out there don't buy cheap because they will same again as the trowels they will bend spend that little bit extra and you won't have to buy twice i'm trying to make life as easy as possible for your ear as in what you need because if you don't have half this stuff when you're out in the middle of a field first detecting it'll take you forever to dig one hole and I'm, it's a lot quicker with all these little items little simple things like a little finds box if you find something really really nice like a gold coin or the silver roman or bronze romans you need a little finds box otherwise they're rolling around in your bag they get knocked about they've spent two thousand years in in your in, in the field staying safe and you've pulled it out chucked it in the bag with a load of iron and, and and destroyed it so little finds box a couple of quid and a little spray bottle not worse than being in the middle of a field having something decent and you want to see how much detail it's got and not having anything to clean it so I'll get hold of these really cheap like i said and it's just worth having in your finds bag now there's a big thing out there everybody always wants to buy the deepest metal detector surprisingly enough you don't need the deepest metal detector what you need is a metal detector that's good between non-ferrous and ferrous targets because you can mask the good stuff so what you need is a machine with a fast recovery speed and everybody goes oh i just want to what's the deepest machine you'll be very surprised how shallow targets that have been lost thousands of years ago uh three four inches deep especially on pasture where it's not been um messed around with and ploughed or anything like that you'd be very surprised how shallow targets are and especially with the romans they were real messy people so there was loads of iron and then you've got this little silver roman or a bronze roman that can be masked by all the iron so you actually need a machine with a quick recovery speed the more higher up you go with a machine like the equinox 800 that i use i can adjust the recovery speed so when it's not as trashy i can have my machine running flat out and really really deep and find I, I found targets at two foot and that's when you can actually adjust the recovery speed and that's when the machines get more and more advanced when you're starting out 
probably a little bit too much so what you want is a machine that will get between all the, the rubbish targets and it's good enough early enough when you start metal detecting um, another little tip boots make sure you buy a good pair of boots because you're going to be digging hundreds of targets and I, the amount of holes I put in mine I've had wellies everything the best best real ones are the kind of the hiking boots try and find one with a real good sole on it because I promise you you will go through boots what do you do if you find something the first thing you do is you go to your floor which is finally as an officer there's one in each counter so say if you find Roman coins uh, if there's three or, three or more coins in a hole all together that's classed as a hoard so then that will automatically have to be recorded take it to your floor um, and they will record it it'll either go to the museum if they want to obtain it and then whatever it's worth you have to split between you and the landowner anything of value make sure that you do split with the landowner because there is a big sentence for people that it's basically stealing from them and it does help with if you do record things it does help the heritage of England right I'm basically coming to the end of the video now I'm going to show you how to swing a machine in a minute if there is anything that people want that can give me a suggestion on showing you things how to do things or whatever then i'm going to start making more helpful videos rather than just going out metal detecting and showing you my finds i want to be more helpful so if people are struggling with uh, how to adjust settings in the field on uh, trashy land and not trashy land and whatever then let me know i'm i'm up for suggestions and yeah i'm going to start doing a lot more helpful videos rather than just doing me going out and finding stuff i think i want to do more, something that's more helpful for people uh if they're struggling with a machine or whatever so what i'm going to do now is quickly show you how you should swing a machine and then um yeah so you basically want it does help if you've got a cuff um let me just open this up a little bit because i'm not that short Oh, it's the cable, hang on. There we go. And, right, so we've opened the machine. So how you swing a machine is, you want to have it nice and flat to the floor, as close to the floor as you can. If you're on stubble, you have to basically just brush through it, but on grass, you basically want to have it flat to the floor, and as you go around on yourself, don't come up like this, or like this, or like this, because you're missing areas of land you basically want to do a nice clean sweep so you want to be going cross nice and flat across nice and flat cross nice and flat and basically just trying to go over the area like this nice and slow low and slow and that's basically how you swing a machine not too hard and the more you do it the easier you'll find it I hope this video has been really helpful and like I said if you want to win the goodies that I showed you earlier these then follow the instructions that I said earlier like I said any more videos that people want doing um, I'm open to suggestions and yeah I hope everybody stays safe and I'll see you all soon